Welcome to Natural Rep Success, a podcast series featuring the talents of LGBT real estate agents and allies who inspire the LGBT community. I'm your host, David Sorodi. Today we will hear the inspirational story from best-selling author, business coach, and a simply inspiring person from Swift Transitions, Sherry Swift. Welcome, Sherry. How are you doing today? I am fantastic, David. Super excited about being here with you today. Well, this is going to be a fascinating podcast because it's not often that we hear from someone who lost her parents in an incredibly tragic circumstance, was married to a man, had three kids, ultimately found true happiness, remarried, this time to a woman. So let's get right into it, Sherry. And let's start with your upbringing, your mom and dad who were married for 40 years, and you were the youngest of four kids. Yeah, so, you know, I grew up in a very traditional environment, very traditional family. Um, The baby of four enjoyed a wonderfully um, just healthy, normal um, upbringing. And my, my parents were married for, for a very, very long time. No abuse. Everything was amazing. Everything was wonderful until it just wasn't anymore. And that was because my father, he was suffering in silence. No one knew about it. Um, and, and I looked up one day, and my life just immediately changed when we found out that he – took the life of my mother, and then just three days later, um, he was gone, and it was, you know, just absolute re-conforming um, my life. So, yeah, it, 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 it was when I started. It's when I started and became Sherry Swift. You know how we have those things that happen that make us who we really are, and that was that thing for me. You talked about your dad, and while all of us are sorry to hear this story, you're very open about what happened. Your dad, you discovered, had a brain tumor that impacted what happened. What was it like to go through that? Um, Well, I, I think that what is most important is that we talk about and, and I talk about it a lot in, in my coaching and, and training and speaking to people, the process of recovery. So um, my father was suffering in silence, and so many of us, we suffer in silence. We have things that are going on with us. We have things that we are struggling with. So many people suffering deep in depression and suffering with um, sickness and illness. And, you know, like so many people in life, we suffer with things, but we feel like we're supposed to be strong and hold those things in and not tell other people about them. And they, we think that that makes us courageous, when in reality, it's us suffering in silence. And, and silence creates opportunities for an umbrella of darkness. And um, so I think that uh, I, I, I feel bad that my father had to suffer in silence, um, but he was he was traditional like so many other men that thought, you know, I'm, I'm just going to deal with this by myself, and I'm not going to tell other people about it. And um, and so I, I am the encourager of transparency because of that. Sherry, you said that your life really began later in life, in your, your 20s and 30s. Can you explain that? Well, let me let me tell you. I think that David, we all have um, something, a trigger, something that happens in our life that really makes way for and creates the opportunity to become the next version of ourselves, right? So, you know, when my parents died and the tragedy behind how my parents died. Um, it, what it did was it changed my thinking. It changed the way that I saw the world. It changed so much in me. And it's what created in me a person who wanted to do more for other people, who wanted to light the way for other people who experienced tragedy. It is actually when I became the person 
that is interested every day in sitting with people to talk about what they want to do with their lives. And when I became the person who's interested in talking with people about grief recovery and when I became the person that's interested in helping people step into their personal life the way they, you know, really want to, that that was the incident, that was the trigger for me that created my opportunity to actually become Sherry Swift. And it wasn't an immediate transformation because you talk about getting married six months later after your parents had passed away. Correct. And, you know, this is what I want you to know. is That that was very much a part of that transformation. So my parents passed away, and I went into this this deep, dark place that after a tragedy like that happened, um, a lot of people will go into a deep, dark place. And I went into this deep, deep, dark place. And what we very often search for when we're in a deep, dark place like that after a tragedy is something that looks and feels familiar. So I was looking for something that looked and felt familiar. And um, this marriage is what manifested six months after that tragedy. So, David, what not to do after you have a tragedy in your life is get married six months later, right? And so I got married six months later, um, and it set out a, you know, many, many, 15-plus year period of um, a a not-so-happy life and um, not complete and total transparency, but it, it resulted in, in three beautiful children and um, and just a, you know, a wonderful, wonderful learning opportunity. So, you know, I think that when when I say to people, things happen to you, and they don't really happen to you, they happen for you. And it's important for people to understand that whatever it is that you're going through right now, you're going through it to become the next best version of yourself. It doesn't feel like it when you're in the middle of it, but trust me, there's something for you on the other side of it. Now, along this journey, you stumbled into real estate, and we'll talk about that later. You found your passion, you're coaching, you're helping people. Are you happy now? Oh, my gosh, I've never been happier. I've never been happier. So I am super uberly happy, happily married to the most wonderful woman who's also my business partner. Um, she's the operations side of my, my organization, and um, and I am I, my life is full, and I am full of happiness. And, again, this is why I say to people, when you are in the midst of something that is dark and that feels tragic and that feels broken, just just know that there is something on the other side of this for you. Um, so much happiness. I am living life out loud. It's absolutely delicious, and, and my goal is to tell as many people as humanly possible about um, just the opportunity to hang in there because it gets better. Now, coming out of such a, a horrible tragedy, refining yourself, learning about yourself, that was the premise of your book. That's titled Grow Into Yourself. Why in the world would you want to go that deep inside such a personal story and want to share it for everybody to to read? Great question. You know, I think I think that all opportunity comes through transparency. You know, there's a good number of us that walk around carrying so many bags, David. I mean, like we are carrying baggage and secrets that sometimes don't even have anything to do with us. Like somebody did something really terrible to you and your family has completely and totally convinced you not to say a word about it to anybody. And you've been walking around, not you, but someone has been walking around with this baggage um, for years and years and years and years, and it's impacting their ability to love, impacting their ability to have happiness, impacting their ability to professionally grow into who they're supposed to be. So I am a true believer that transparency is the opportunity, and the more comfortable anyone, I believe, can get in telling their story and sharing what it is that turned them into who they are, the, 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 the better the growth, the better the opportunity. And I also feel a responsibility. I feel a, a real sense of responsibility because I can't tell you the number of people that I have met that have had tragedy similar to mine and that when I'm able to share this story with them, it provides them with 
with hope and with possibility. So, you know, you know that, that's why. You go back through the story um, it's, it's to provide a light for other people. You really believe that it's okay to be broken. What does that mean? You know, I, I, um, I think that, I, you know, I tell, I, I, I tell people often, I say, you know, I think it's amazing if someone has had an opportunity to live a life that has just been amazing and, um, and there's never been any pain and um, distension in their life. Um, but I don't know how interesting. <laughs> that person really is. Um, I think that the the deeper the consequence and the deeper the challenge and the harder the process, the more beautiful and the more opportunity in the outcome. So, you know, very often when I'm talking with some of my coaching clients who have young people who are struggling, um, making maybe not the best decisions and um, living through difficult times with their young people, I, I tell my clients, you know, that there is something amazing that this young person is supposed to do because when you're going through something, you're supposed to be picking something up along the way while you're going through it. It teaches you things. It turns you into a better, stronger, more courageous version of yourself. So um, that's why I think it's okay to be broken because it turns us into a better version of ourselves. Now, it's not fun being broken. And when you're being broken, you're not having a good time when it's happening. But ultimately, it turns you into a more interesting, a more relatable, and a stronger, more courageous version of yourself. And once you realize you're broken, then you can begin to move on, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. you got to get to a place um, where you are comfortable saying, you know, this is not, this is not okay. I am not the happiest version of myself. I am not the most, um, the, the, the most productive version of myself. I Things could be better for me. And that's always the first step is just deciding this is not okay. I could do better than this. I can be happier than this. What are a couple tips that you can help right now with people who think they're struggling and they want to move on? How do they move on? You know, I, I think that um, – uh, the first, the first step is to spend some time introspectively uh, with yourself, with your story, with your reality. It's, it's some, sometimes you got to go into a, a dark place and look at what all of your reality is, and 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 just deal with it. You know, just deal with it. Whether it's through journaling, um, I encourage people to buy my book and um, my book, Grow Into Yourself, because it's. It, it's somewhat a, a workbook, David. It, towards the end of the book, it begins to ask people the questions that they need to answer in order to move from one spot in their life to another. So, you know, journal it out, um, you know, buy my book and, and move through it. Uh, partner with a coach or a therapist or a counselor who you can trust in order to get some of that out. And then once you've done that, create a game plan and uh, as it relates to what you want it to look like. Get brave enough to say out loud what you want your life to actually look like. Because some of us, you know, David, we're scared to death to actually say what we want our life to look like. We're scared of judgment. We're scared of what other people will think about it. Get brave enough after you've dealt with your demons to actually say, and this is what I want, and don't be afraid that – it might not manifest, and, and that's the reason why so many people don't say it out loud is because they're scared to death. If I say it out loud, it makes it real, and I might not get it, and I don't know if I can tolerate the disappointment. And you also might have to leave some of those who have been in your life behind. Oh, my gosh. You know, I, mean, I can't tell you the number of goodbyes. Um, in the last 15 years that I've had to experience, you know what I mean? I mean, you, you do. You have to, you know, I, I believe it was Jim Rowan that said that we are the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. And if you are constantly and consistently in growth mode, let's just face it, your five might be consistently and constantly changing, right? So if if you are 
if, if you're since you are this way today and you were this way and these five people matched you perfectly because you were this way today, you know, but then you're in this growth process and you're changing and you're changing. At some point, these people might open their mouths up and everything they say to you might sound like wah, 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 wah right? Like what they're saying doesn't make any sense anymore. So you have to give yourself permission sometimes to outgrow people. And that doesn't mean that you have to be negative or nasty. It just means that they don't fit with where you're going and um, and then a lot of people they don't they don't ever arrive at where they're supposed to be because they're scared to death to say goodbye to some some of the negativity that's surrounding them we're going to keep talking about Sherry's incredible journey and her life as a coach but first the fourth annual Nagorat National LGBT real estate conference will be in one of America's favorite resorts Palm Springs on October 17th through the 19th. The conference will be a star-studded affair. Bravo's Madison Hildebrand will share his journey on his million-dollar listing show and beyond. And LGBT icon Cleve Jones will speak about his incredible memoir, When We Rise, which inspired the ABC TV miniseries. We will be entertained by the hilarious Alec Mappa, and of course, we'll learn together from an amazing lineup of other great speakers. We'll be able to network and have fun, and more than 700 are expected to attend, making this the largest LGBT and allies event in real estate history. We can register today for this can't-miss event at naglrep.com. That's naglrep.com. And Sherry, you will be speaking at the conference. What topics will we hear from you? I am so excited and honored to be a part of this conference. I cannot wait. I'm super excited, encouraging everyone that I know every time that I bump into someone in, in my work and, and in the community to definitely participate. I'm going to be excited to um, talk about lead generation, the necessity for lead generation, the importance to fill your pipeline. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a licensed realtor. I've been licensed since 1999. And, um, I've practiced real estate successfully, independently. And probably about 50% of my client base right now is, um, it consists of established realtors who are 10, 15, 20 million dollars or greater in production. So my whole why and what for when I'm meeting with these people and supporting their growth and their teams is to make sure that they understand um, the importance of lead generation. So I'm going to come into this convention and we are going to talk about the importance of lead generation, the mindset that you need to have in order to actually accept that lead generation is part of your job every day. Um, we're going to talk about script and dialogue and most importantly, Importantly, conversion and how to convert those leads once you get them. It's going to be immediately applicable, and you are going to be able to walk out of there with something that you can put in your business and change things with. So I'm excited about it. I can tell you're excited. The passion is coming through, and the sessions will be tremendous. Let's talk about your entrance into real estate. For many, real estate is a second or third career. For you, it was too. But your reason to get into real estate was not on the sales side, was it? Not really, no. I, you know, the only reason that I was really interested in coming into real estate at all, David, was I wanted access to the multi-list. Um, I was interested in investing in properties, so I had zero, zero, and then again, zero interest in becoming a big mega agent um, in the real estate industry. And, um, and then once I... Um, Got in there. I thank God I bumped into a broker who, at that time, I was I was working with um, a a local brand in Michigan, and I bumped into a broker who said to me, "I'll let you park your license here and run your transactions through the office, but I think you could do this, and I think you could do it on a high level. And so, if you promise me you'll do this, this, and this, then I'll let you park your license here." And thank God she gave me that challenge because uh, I found out that it, there's no magic here um, with. 
and um, you know, an effort that there's a lot of money to be made here. So I actually built a very healthy real estate career um, almost by accident, right? And and then found out that it's 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 all in systems and tools and consistency. And that local office company was Real Estate One. You eventually left them to join Keller Williams as a team leader. We've heard so much about Keller Williams and this title of team leader. What is that job? So in the Keller Williams brand and model, um, and business model, and organizational model, team leaders are – Probably the role and position in other brokerages that you would call a manager, okay? Um, but the team leaders are people who their primary responsibility is to invite talent to join the, the brokerage. So it's, it's a big, big recruiting um, and partnering position. So my primary responsibility was to invite other people into the Keller Williams family and the brokerage that I was working with at that time. And then in addition to that, um, you know, the other part of my job was to coach and train the realtors who we were already in partnership with. And that is when you found that the part you loved most about what you were doing with Keller Williams was that coaching. How did that come about? Well, you know, you sit down with enough people um, and talk with them about what it is that they really want, and either you are really interested and helping them get there um, on a very regular basis. You want to have more and more and more conversations, or you figure out pretty quickly that that is not your thing, and you do not really want to sit and talk with people about what it is that they want. So I found out the more that I talked to people that I really had a really genuine interest in helping people evolve, and, and I just I loved that piece of it more, and I found that I was more effective at that piece of it than the other piece. Now, don't get me wrong. I love recruiting, and I love inviting people into a wonderful opportunity, but I just have a, a passion for helping people to realize uh, their best life and to find the productivity level that they're looking for, to help them to find the tools that they need in order to make the kind of money that they want to make. And most importantly, David, you know, in our industry, we are so connected to the outcome as realtors. Like, if you... Um, if you build a healthy real estate career, you have to stay in it because we tell ourselves the lie that none of our clients want to deal with anybody other than us. When the reality is your sustainability in this industry is directly connected to and linked to your ability to recreate yourself. Because one day, all of us are going to wake up and go, I don't want to go show any houses today. I don't want to go on any listing appointments today. And wouldn't it be amazing if you can – Find some people who you can pour your talent into that will go do that in your name, in your brand, and you can go sit on a beach somewhere and live out the rest of your life and enjoy your life or go do the next thing that you want to do, right? Why do you think coaching has come on the scene almost overnight in real estate? You know, I don't think that's a great question. I don't think it's overnight. I think that um, more people are just leaning into it. Um, you know, I've been coaching now for many, many years. I mean, and so I think that it's just becoming uh, more uh, popular now. I think that, or not even popular, more commonly known. I think that more people are accepting and speaking to the necessity um, to have a coach, to have someone to support your business. And, and, and to, let's just be perfectly frank. In our industry, our industry, we are surrounded by people who have to have just a little bit of ego in order to do what we do successfully. Like, you got to be pretty comfortable and confident in, your, in yourself to become a mega agent, to, to negotiate anybody's most valuable asset. Um, and so in, in the real estate industry, you don't find very many people who say publicly out loud that, you know, I am doing as well as I'm doing because I'm working with this 
professional coach or I'm working with this coaching organization. It's just not an accolade that's thrown around out there very often because we support so many people who are, you know, just pretty comfortable in who they are. Uh, and I think that that's switching and it's changing a little bit now. I think that people are getting more in our industry are getting more comfortable with the idea that no one succeeds alone, um, that my business as a realtor is no different than any other business model. And if if any other CEO in any other industry would hire a consultant to come in and tell them, like you said to me before, David, in other conversations, well, I'm going to hire somebody to come in and tell me what I might not see because I'm too close to it, right? If other brands and industries will allow that to happen, why wouldn't a realtor give themselves the same permission to have somebody come in and offer that type of insight? So I think the realtors are getting more comfortable with the public support and giving themselves permission to have that. Well, let's pause for a second and talk about Nagorep, which can give all of our listeners some comfort. During Pride Month, Nagorep will celebrate its 10th anniversary. Today, the organization continues to grow in size and scope and now has more than 1,500 members. The benefits are many to the organization. A profile on nagorep.com, which receives 75,000 unique visits a month and is the leading referrer of LGBT clients. 90% of Nagorep members close at least one to three deals per year through their membership, 8% say they close four to six deals a year, and 2%, a whopping seven to ten deals, come their way through NAGOREP. And, of course, NAGOREP provides its members with the capability to be around a close-knit group of members for networking and learning opportunities, along with the capability to showcase leadership at the local, state, and national levels. Make sure you join NAGOREP at NAGOREP.com. Sherry, let's go back to your story. You were at Keller Williams. You're happy coaching. And then you make another bold move, and you decide to go out on your own and start Swift Transition. Yes, yes. I, You know, it, it is the bold move that every realtor makes when they go from being an employee in any corporate environment to deciding that they're going to go out and sell real estate full time. So I said, you know, I love um, my I, I love my coaching clients. I I love the ability to connect with my coaching clients and I'm really excited to um, to become my own entity and to step out on my own because I'll be able to reach more people that way. So, you know, Swift Transitions was born, and we are now a coaching and training and consulting organization that not only coaches, trains, and consults within the real estate industry, but, and we have coaching clients who are stretched out in many other industries, and we are invited into organizations on a very regular and consistent basis to help them to connect on a deeper level, around customer service, around disc and behavioral understanding so that we are serving our clients and customers where they should be, um, one-on-one basis for productivity and performance. So, yeah, we, we stepped out, and we've been having a ball ever since. I know this is a hard question because you have so many clients, and to narrow down their needs is hard. But if you could, what are some of the common themes that you see with your real estate clients? um, Yeah, it's it's a good question. It's a really good question, David. I think that um, the number one need that um, I find with my real estate clients is the need for focus. You know, let's let's put the squirrels away. You know, let's um, let's focus on one thing. Let's focus on it long enough to see if it gives us an ROI, a return on investment, um, and let's try to uh, to narrow the the squirrel and the distraction that we have a tendency to suffer from in our industry. I think another thing that um, that we need to focus on in our industry is the necessity and the importance uh, to time block, to not just wing it on a day-to-day basis. We have got to show up in intention in our lives, not in reaction to what other people want. You did not go into your business. You did not start your own business to have to show up every time somebody rings a bell. You get to control that reaction, but first you have to create an intentional time block and 
be on purpose about when you're going to be, where you're going to be. And that kind of leads me into the importance of our industry understanding uh, the necessity for lead generation and pipeline filling. You know, so many of us never get to a place where we create and build a sustainable business, a business that is going to produce a certain amount of income every year, no matter who's in the White House, no matter what's happening with the market, no matter what the interest rates are, we just know that our business is going to create a sustainable amount of income every year. And so many of us never reach that point because we don't accept um, and assign the necessity for lead generation like every single solitary day. You need to be telling somebody about what you do for a living and filling your pipeline or 30 to 45 days from now, you are not going to know what you've got coming your way. So that's just a few things that I talk to my clients about. And is the greatest asset a coach provides accountability? It's one, yeah, it is. It is. Um, accountability is definitely a very important asset that a coach provides. Um, and I will also tell you that uh, when you're selecting a coach and when you're partnering with a coach, you want to make sure that this is a coach who you can relate to and that you like and trust because I do believe, David, that all growth happens from the inside out. So, you know, it's important that you have a coach who you can trust with your personal development in addition to your professional development um, because there might be something in the way that's keeping you from making those phone calls, something in the way that's keeping you from showing up at the office when you're supposed to be there, something in the way that's keeping you from asking for the business, that's keeping you from calling your database and talking to all those people that you should be talking to and asking them for help. So we have to move through some um, things that don't have anything to do with business sometimes in order to get to the opportunity that the business provides. So I think that's why you really want to qualify your coach and make sure that they are certified, to make sure that they actually practice their business on a regular basis and are capable of me moving you through that. Uh, Sherry, you are truly amazing. Your passion, your leadership, your desire to help people just exudes confidence. I want to encourage everybody to visit Sherry's website. It's sherryswift.com. That's Sherry with a Y, swift.com. And then make sure you go to Amazon and get her book. Sherry, that's got to sound just unbelievable. Go buy my book at Amazon. Oh, my gosh, it's bananas. I, I, I almost can't get used to it, right? Um, whenever I hear someone say, you know, go buy Sherry's book on Amazon, or when I hear someone say, you know, oh, Sherry's a best-selling author on Amazon, it's just bananas. I mean, I'm having a ball. Um, it's fantastic, and, um, and, I'm, and I'm getting very used to it. So on to the next project. I'm already writing the next book, David. Will you sign this first book for me in Palm Springs? Absolutely. I can't wait to sign your book, and I'm even more excited about meeting you. Cannot wait to spend the time together. Sherry, I can't thank you enough for joining us. I wish you never had to go through what you did, but clearly the growth that you've had, the evolution that you have, it's inspiring, and so many can benefit from you. Thanks so much. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I can't wait to see everyone in October. This has been Nagorep's success. Until next time, I'm David Sorotis.